Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Ongoro, the former Kasarani member of parliament, yesterday officially joined UDA party. In 2008, when I was first elected as the MP for Kasarani, we were the traitors. We fought. And we really fought. I was in the front lines throughout. In 2013, we were in the trenches again. In 2017, we were in the trenches. And now 2022, I had to do a lot of soul searching and ask myself, is it right to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again for 20 plus years? And that move by Elizabeth Tongoro, if you ask me, is significant politically speaking for two main reasons. Number one, Elizabeth Ongoro is the sister to Otiende Amolo. Otiende Amolo is a close associate of Raila Amolo Odinga. Number two, Elizabeth Ongoro also did not really defect from ODM party to UDA party the way Malala was trying to suggest. Elizabeth Ongoro actually defected from ANC party to UDA party. For me, I'm reading something. Clovis Malala, the Secretary General of UDA party, who was a close associate of Musalim Davadi and a former Secretary General of uh, ANC party, is actually facilitating the defection of former ANC party leaders to UDA party. The truth of the matter is that Elizabeth Tongoro was kicked out of ODM in 2017. Nikafanya tenda mpaka, nikachengwa kidogo, na nikakasirika kidogo tu, nikaenda kwa kwa reserve bench. Kidogo tu, nikaanza kufanya limbering, limbering, nikaona easy team, hii team, team gani hii. Mimi, wajo nirudi kwa the main team. Sasa, kwa saa hii, sita sema mengi, kwa sababu ukiwa kiongozi, nyaki pandi jote ndi, ui nyama beru? Be ui njoka make lono? Na awachi kithochi? Awachi kithochi? Sasa ni mpaka tukue pamoja. Tukiwa na upendo na umoja. Na kila mtu. Kwa sababu baba ni wakila mtu. Odium party preferred the brother in Rareda. And there was no way they were going to allow Otinda Molo to win in Rareda and also favor Elizabeth Ongoro in, uh, in uh, Ruaraka. Because by that time Kasarani had been split. Vile vile tuna amekuja pia na wamama ambao wame defect kutoka kwa chama cha ODM. Wakuje hapa mbele, wakuje hapa mbele tuki wale chair ladies wa kwa ODM. Na vile vile, Arocho. Arocho! Tunakaribisha Arocho from Tubili Party. Yes. So in this video, I want us to look at this political significance of this def def defection because clearly the UDA party were trying to make it appear as if it was a law affair. That's number one. They also wanted to make it appear as if the defection of Elizabeth Ongoro was from ODM to UDA party. But before we get into all those, in case you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And allow me to also thank the following people for the coffee which they sent me earlier today. I'm so grateful. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen. A cup of coffee is only 200 bob. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now dive in. Why do you think UDA party is keen on parading Luo politicians whenever they defect to UDA party? Why? 
And why is it that during this defection, you always see just the same, same faces? Whenever any Luo leader is defecting, then you'll always see Kidero, Owede, either Owalo, the same, same faces. Why do you think that's happening? It's happening because UDA party, I've always said here and I'm repeating, William Ruto is keen on winning the support of the Luos. William Ruto is not taking any chance with the Luos. He believes that for him to win the Kisses and for him to win the Luyas, because they always vote together, it means he must win the support of the Luos. William Ruto is not sure whether Raila Odinga is going to be on the ballot. In case Raila Odinga is not going to be on the ballot, it means the political equation in the Republic of Kenya is definitely going to change. For example, if Azimi were to front Kalonzo Musioka as the presidential candidate, then Raila Phobia would not be able to sell in the mountain. And that's why Ruto is actually keen on winning the support of the Luo because he believes Raila Odinga might not be on the ballot. But that's not the subject for today. Today, I want us to focus on this particular defection. First of all, let us ask ourselves, is Elizabeth Ongoro significant politically speaking? If you ask me, and as someone who have worked with her before, I think Elizabeth Ongoro is a good mobilizer. She's a strong woman, and she's capable of causing serious havoc. But for winning, I don't know. Which takes us to the first objective of this defection of Elizabeth Ongoro. By the way, let me add here that Elizabeth Ongoro is actually a close ally and a close associate of Eli Dowalo. So when I saw Eli Dowalo joining, uh, <coughs> joining uh, UDA, I knew Elizabeth Ongoro was just on her way. Just the same way when Eli Dowalo joined the ANC party, Elizabeth Ongoro also followed. But let us focus on uh, the political significance of this defection, the objective. Number one, Kenya Kwanzaa were really affected by clear tribal targeting of the Luos. The maiming, the elimination of the Luos during the last demonstrations. So they were really looking at something which could divert the attention of the nation, of the Luo nation, from the police brutality. So they had to engineer, they had to come up with something. So they came up with this particular defection. Because any sensible party, if I were a sensible party, if I were Malala or if I were Ongoro, I would not have paraded myself for defection when the issue of police brutality is actually the biggest topic in Luanyanza as we speak. But they went ahead. Why? Because they wanted to divert the attention of the Luo nation from discussing the police brutality to now try and focus on the politics, Elizabeth Ongoro. That's why Evans Kidero, a senior Luo, was not even issued a statement regarding the police brutality, was there in person. That's why Mweli Mowidi, one of the most vocal UDA supporters from the region, was never uttered a word regarding police brutality, was there to receive Elizabeth Ongoro. So in my view, it was agreed within UDA party that they needed to divert the attention of the Luan nation from police brutality. So that's number one. Number two, I've always opined here that politics is a perceptional game. What UDA are keen on doing is basically to try and create a perception that they are winning the hearts of the Luo nation. And what a better catch than Otienda Molo. Otienda Molo's sister, who is Elizabeth Ongoro. Otienda Molo is one of the key pillars in Ray Rodinga's team. Then the sister joins UDA. Then they will go to CIA. Are they from Asembo Yoma? Then they'll tell the people of Asembo that, okay, or a reader for that matter, that Otienda Molo, your member of parliament, is in ODM, the sister is in UDA. So why don't you also split? Some can join here, some can join this other, part, uh, other side. But this, the truth is, UDA party is keen on creating the perception that they are making inroads. And that's why they were keen on portraying 
this defection of Elizabeth Tongoro as a defection from ODM party. Even the women leaders they were parading are just Elizabeth Tongoro's friends. I know these people. None of them is an official of ODM party. So that's the second objective. The third objective for me is Nairobi politics. William Ruto tried Kupanga Nairobi in the last election. It didn't work. He had Sakaja, and of course you know why Sakaja won. He had uh, the senatorial candidate, you know why he lost. He had the women rep, lost. In, in my view, William Ruto is now discarding Millicent Omanga. He has realized that there's no way Millicent Omanga can win in Nairobi. And William Ruto has also facilitated the exit of Esther Pasaris from Nairobi politics, women rep. Remember, Pasaris won because he's a Kikuyu who had the support of the Lewis. There is no way Pasaris can make a comeback in ODM. And I saw the other day the Rachel Shebesh trying to make a comeback. I'm sure before we knew it, Rachel Shebesh will be in Azimio and in uh, ODM for that matter to take over that role. So William Ruto Anajipanga, he has calculated that if I have a Luo in the name of Ongoro, then with the support of Kikuyus and with Sakaja as the governor, then Elizabeth Ongoro can actually emerge as a women rep. Iwe Sabu Nikali. The only miscalculation is that the Luos in most cases will always listen to Relo Dinka. But I think Ongoro can actually perform better than Millicent Omanga as a women rep candidate for Nairobi. So if you ask me, Roto is trying to Jipanga in Nairobi. Number four in my view, Roto is making the move, the bold move to venture into Nyanza politics. He's now done with Nyanza in Nyanza, Luo Nyanza. Now he's dealing with the Luos in the diaspora. And that's why I'm looking at Elizabeth Ongoro. I will not be surprised when William Ruto will unveil another prominent Luo who is a key political figure in other regions, let's say like in Mombasa. Let's say Awiti Bolo. Or let's say another Luo in another town playing key politics in those regions. So in my view, if you ask me, William Ruto is now keen on venturing into law politics and is trying to target the low-hanging fruits. Someone like Elizabeth Ongoro has been out of power for long, which means she desperately needs a government appointment, which is going to come. Then she also needs to do business. She's a businesswoman. And she'll be able to do that. And lastly, I tend to think that William Ruto in his strategy is trying to identify some Luos, give them some board appointment. Because if you've been studying William Ruto, it's only in Luo Nyanza where leaders defect and they are forced to put on the yellow. And immediately they put the yellow shirt, then they are appointed. That can explain why Meguna Meguna is yet to don that yellow t-shirt because he's not comfortable with it. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. That's my thought. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.